jagged rocks and rivers of fire. Here, I found the greatest of all bloodthirsters. Bones of all that walked or crawled littered his lair. Scarbrand, rage and cut. I had but a moment to make my case. The time it took to sharpen his murderous blades. The demon had spent millennia harvesting skulls to earn the forgiveness of his master, the Chaos God, Khorne. The skull of Urson would gain his favor. What do you know of Khorne's favor? Nothing, mighty Scarbrand. I am but a servant, ready to aid your slaughter. I can smell the magic on you, seer. I'll take your skull. Why take mine, when you can have the skull of a god? Let me guide you through the maelstrom to where Belagor imprisons the bear. Take his skull. All I want is a drop of Urson's blood. Keep your skull. Give me the bear. One skull for the throne. The rest are mine to collect. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Wiggle Man and welcome to Loot Order. Today, if you hadn't figured it out already, we're going to be painting up a bust of Scarbrand, the Exiled One. Scarbrand is an exalted bloodthirster of corn from the Warhammer universe. Um, I've been playing a lot of Total War Warhammer 3 lately, uh, getting ready for the release of Immortal Empires at the end of the month, and uh, I've always had a fascination with the world of Warhammer. I've always been a big enjoyer of the lore. Uh, never, ever played the tabletop game, but I've certainly collected and painted my fair share of minis. Don't forget, if you enjoy this content, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, it all helps. And if you're here for just the reveal at the end, then skip to the last minute, but if you do that, you have to leave me a like. So, to get you up to speed, we've given our Scarbrand bust a base coat of black Vallejo, uh, we've then applied a zenithal highlight with our titanium white ink through the airbrush. We accentuated some of the shading to begin with, with a muted grey ink, and now we're currently in the process of going over it with a red ink. Once the ink's dry, we then re-establish our black areas, which is going to be mainly the hair on the model. And then for the horns, we go in with the Vallejo light brown. At this stage, I'm not too overly concerned about overspray, putting it through my airbrush. Uh, that can all be fixed later on. We then give the bottle an all-over gloss varnish, getting it ready to slap all over some of that lovely, lovely AK Interactive streaking grime. Using the same technique that we have for the last two videos, we use a large brush dipped into some mineral spirits and we begin to work that in to reactivate the enamel wash elements of the streaking grime, just to really add some depth onto the model. Once the wash has dried off, you can see it's really uh, matted up the model quite a lot, removed a lot of the sheen. I then take an airbrush and I begin to go back into some of the recesses and re-establish some of the shadows with the, with the muted grey ink that we used at the beginning. Uh, 
And then to add some highlights onto the model, I take some Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel and I begin to dry brush it all over the raised areas of the flesh. Then taking that Evil Sun Scarlet, I also begin to do some brushwork around the face area just to try and bring out a bit more of that detail. I then start to lay the brushwork down for the exposed part of his skull on the right side of his face. When Scarbrand was exiled by his god Korn, he was thrown across the Chaos Realms for eight days and eight nights straight, so surely that would have caused a bit of damage. The reason that Scarbrand was exiled was because he was tricked by the uh, the, the god of change and magic, uh, Zinch, to challenge Korn for his godly throne. And Scarbrand tried to attack Korn from behind, and it wasn't so much the act of violence that displeased Korn, it was more the the act of cowardice and, and not showing himself to be a true warrior by attacking him from behind was what enraged him. Now back to the painting, we begin to add some Agrax Earthshade onto the the skull area that we've painted in. And we also begin to fill in the horns as well. Uh, you'll notice that I've also gone over the tips of the horns with a, a slightly darker shade of brown, just to, to give that impression that, that they've grown with age. Uh, the older that Scarbrand's gotten, the longer he's he's lived, if, if living really is a thing in the realms of chaos, the, the more kind of mottled and, and dark that they become. I then add an off-white paint just to the tip of his exposed skull eye and also go back over the body uh, with the airbrush and a red ink to re-establish, well, to try and punch up uh, some of the, the red highlights on his flesh. Next up we block in a bit of a highlight back onto the skull using Citadel's Screaming Skull once again and uh, I also take the opportunity to use Citadel's Andri Dust base paint to block out the, the little tiny chin horns that he's got going on. Whilst I wait for the chin horns to dry off, I take a red tone from, no, I tell a lie, it was flesh tone from Army Painter's Washes and apply it to the insides of his broken horns. Following that, I take my Vallejo black and I begin to re-establish the boundaries of the hair around his chin and around the back. I then begin to apply a dry brush of Citadel's Screaming Skull around the horns, trying to catch all the raised areas of the horns to show that there is a little bit of wear on them, because um, obviously a, a huge demon of battle uh, would surely be using those horns in battle. I then begin to go over the face once more with Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, this was more just to, once uh, as we did with the black, re-establish the boundaries. So from where the horns end and the face begins, the flesh on the face begins. I also take this colour, I use it as an opportunity to, to do a bit of highlighting in areas that I might not have been able to hit with the airbrush without massively um, getting over spray on areas that I didn't want to be read at the time. So for example, his, his top left collarbone. 
one of the things I really wanted to achieve doing this project was was work a bit more on uh, getting a bit more contrast into my models and, and I think going through this stage here really really did help out a lot with it. Following that, we do a bit of edge highlighting around the horns, once again, mainly focusing around the base of the horns, using our screaming skull, uh, just to get a bit more differentiation from the tips of the horns, from the base of the horns in regards to, uh, I'd say, bone color. This was the stage where I really felt like the model was beginning to come together, but it was still missing a few more key details, just for me to be able to tell myself, I can call this complete. One of those elements is that I added a teeny dot of black ink into the eye socket just to give it a lot more depth. For the skull shoulder pad, I take Citadel Zandri Dust and I give it a base coat. I give it two layers just to make sure it's nice and solid. And for the breastplate of Scarbrand, I take Vallejo Black and I give it a base coat all over of that. With the skull shoulder pad fully dried, I wanted to do something a bit different with the with the with the shoulder pad to make it stand out from the painting method that we used on the actual skull of Scarbrand and his horns. So I gave it an all-over wash with AK Interactive's winter uh, winter grime effect. And whilst I waited for that to dry, I went over all of the trim on the armour of Scarbrand with Arteza's dark gold that we used in the uh, mask project a few videos ago. I want to challenge myself to do something different. So for the actual skull on the shoulder pad, I took uh, some Screaming Skull and I added quite a lot of uh, acrylic medium to the mix. And then I began to just glaze on uh, layer by layer uh, the Screaming Skull. And I think that gave a really nice uh, chalky effect and it made it very distinct um, from the bones that we'd painted previously. However, from the previous wash, it hadn't really settled that well into the, the eye sockets of the skull. So I took some uh, Citadel Agrax Earthshade and quite a hefty dollop of it and uh, just basically put a drop into each eye socket and let it settle there. I held the model at an angle where I knew it wouldn't dribble all over the rest of the model for quite some time while it dried. Now we're really getting near to the end. I start to do some uh, pin wash of Agrax Earthshade on all the crevices around the face. Uh, once again, it's just getting that difference and, and uh, between the shadows and, and, and the recesses on the face from the highlights that we've painted on previously. For the beard, I highlighted it. I, I wanted to make the braids look a little bit different than the actual black hair. So I used, I believe it was the Fang and uh, Fenrisian Grey as a uh, two-step highlights. And I just simply caught the edge going down each side of it.
getting near to the end of the beard, I base the symbols and bones on the bottom using our black gold from earlier and Citadel Zandri dust. To tidy up the model to get it ready for display, I then base coat all of the stumps and the uh, the base of the plinth all in Vallejo black. And that's about does it for the model. To tie it off, I took some Uhu glue and I used a toothpick just to weave it in between his teeth to give that uh, slavering jowls effect that you've got going on here. Um, but overall, I was very, very happy with how it came out. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, please comment down below. Uh, like if you'd like to see more videos like this. And uh, please, I ask, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.